But what are the benefits of good hygiene then? Well, first of all, good reputation for the company. Satisfied customers, so that's repeat custom. Increased productivity. Brand protection. Legal compliance. Good working conditions. Reduced risk of food poisoning. Longer shelf life of product. And high staff morale, low staff turnover. Safe food then means higher profits. If we look at the flip side of the coin then, the costs of poor hygiene. Unsafe food means lower profits for the various reasons such as food poisoning, food complaints, brand damage, loss of business, closure, fines and legal costs, costs of civil action, pest infestations, waste food, loss of production, high staff turnover, low staff morale. Let's have a look at the major symptoms of food poisoning. You've got nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain or cramps and diarrhea. All in all those are not life threatening, you won't die from any of those symptoms but what you will die from is dehydration. Now dehydration is the loss of bodily fluids through vomiting and diarrhea. It's not so much a big problem in this country because if we get food poisoning we can replace the bodily fluids with clean water from taps or we can use bottled water. Where there is a major problem is in underdeveloped countries and third world countries and where there's natural disasters. With natural disasters you normally find that the water supply becomes contaminated. With floods for example the water becomes contaminated so there's not clean water then to replace the lost bodily fluids. The four major symptoms of food poisoning are really the body's self-defense mechanisms for dealing with food poisoning. The brain sends a message to the esophagus and the stomach to tell it that you've just eaten poisonous material or food that's infected with food poisoning bacteria. So what it does then, the brain tells the stomach to eject the poisonous material as soon as possible. Now if you ingest enough of the poisonous material and you can't eject it all by vomiting, then some of it will go through the stomach and down into the small intestine where if it's bacteria they will start to grow and if they exude toxins round about the lower intestine that's when you start to get abdominal pain. Diarrhea really is just almost similar to vomiting. The brain sends a message to the bowel to excrete the poisonous material as soon as possible. So these uh, self-defense mechanisms for food poisoning. You will find there are other symptoms but not all the major symptoms that appear here. For Compilobacter for example one of the symptoms there are flu-like symptoms but these are the major symptoms and these are the answers you should give if they come up in the exam. At-risk groups or vulnerable groups people who are more susceptible to food poisoning include the elderly, the very young, ill people, hospital patients and more compromised and pregnant women. With elderly people, their immune system is not as strong as it used to be. Their organs can't cope with any attack by any food poisoning symptoms. In 1996, 21 people died from E. coli food poisoning in Scotland. They were all over pensionable age. The very young, the opposite is true there. They haven't developed an immune system yet. Their organs are still quite weak. In 2005, Mason Jones, a young lad of five, died from E. coli food poisoning in South Wales. Ill people, people who are already suffering from the disease. Hospital patients, they can't fight any other disease. Immunocompromised, such as people with AIDS. And the last one, they're pregnant women. They're affected by one particular bacteria called Listeria. Now, Listeria is a bacteria that embeds itself in the placenta of the pregnant women. So, it doesn't really affect the pregnant woman so much, but it does affect the unborn child, usually causing miscarriages or stillbirth. 